Hey guys, welcome to 10-19-19, Saturday, and I have Andrea Light in the house. What's up, girl? Love you, babe. All right, we have October 19th. This is from Jesus Calling, Enjoying Peace in His Presence by Miss Sarah Young. October 19th. Come to me. Why do I have the double thing like <laughs> Never mind. Come to me with your defenses down, ready to be blessed and filled with my presence. Relax and feel the relief of being totally open and authentic with me. You have nothing to hide and nothing to disclose because I know everything about you already. Have you ever had a situation when, say, someone that you had no idea was talking shit about you, for example, was hanging out with people who were apparently talking shit about you, and that person contacts you and lets you know that somewhere someone or few people are talking shit about you and they joined in and somehow they feel that by informing you and asking for forgiveness that that's the right thing to do that happened to me just a few hours ago a few things surprise me these days because I have something called discernment to be transparent has very valuable points to. to be able to trust is a beautiful thing. I think trust comes with transparency. And so I called back this individual. She's okay. I called back this individual and I said, I don't want to know what people were talking about me about. And I don't want to know what it was that made you quote unquote participate in the conversation this quote unquote gossip i just want to know if i ever did anything to you to cause you to gossip about me the answer was an immediate no you never have which is why i reckon i called to forget i not, I mean, informed you and told you and asked for forgiveness i kept cutting them off because I wanted to break through and say, well then, in my opinion, that is someone who had guilt for doing something unpure, untruthful, not of this heart, not from the heart. They gave it to energies and through whatever colored glasses they had on, they just slid into it. So I said to this individual, you contacting me and letting me know that these people felt this way and that you joined in on it. Again, I don't want to know what it is. What that was to me was you having to clear your conscience by informing me of it. If anyone ever does that to you, I suggest the following. Tell them do not bring your guilt for what you did against me to my doorstep and think that that is what forgiveness is. That is someone unable to handle their guilt coming to ruin your day, spreading further negative energy. Do not put up with it. I certainly did not. That person is now blocked. Why? Because I don't have time for that shit and neither should you ever make time for that sort of thing because it's abusive. I don't stutter when I say those words. I don't have any doubt when I say those words. That was BS. Do not ever accept that sort of shit from anyone. I want to repeat with this story of what occurred to me today in mind. I want to repeat this. See why I 
thinking back and forth. I knew the father would speak through these words, and I'm sure he will continue to on this subject, because that's how he works with me. Come to me with your defenses down, ready to be blessed. She's filling my desk with gorgeous stones. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, my friend. Yes, mom. Positive energy. This one was from your grandfather. My grandfather found that in Mount Rushmore. More Isn't than that gorgeous? Half a century ago. More than half a century ago. Then where is Mount Rushmore? South Dakota. South Dakota, what's up? Which one is this one? That's quartz. Clear. Right? Clear quartz. And of course, this is amethyst. What's up, Aquarius? Is? Me too, me too. Where did this one come from? Tunisia. Tunisia? Where the heck is that? Africa. Oh, wow. Black tourmaline. It's for protection? Yes, ma'am. Andrew gave me one of those. Yes, he did. Oh, let me show it off. gorgeous what that thank you gorgeous. thank you Andrew for that and this one it's a garnet that uh, the Queen of Quartz got um, in Canada Wow. she sourced that herself and that is also a smoky quartz you're picking up that she the Queen of Quartz uh, sourced herself um, she's pretty famous Wow this feels good. it's a very powerful stone what's it used for for me <laughs> and that one is probably one of my most powerful stones that is a clear quartz um with a, a smoky quartz and a citrine quartz and a uh, chocolate quartz uh line through it wow. that queen of quartz sent me um it is probably my most powerful stone andrea light by the way is the one who once again as i've mentioned before made this gorgeous gorgeous thing now i will have her and brandon on for tomorrow's Prize for the day, so you look forward to that. Come to me with your defenses down, ready to be blessed and filled with my presence. Relax and feel the relief of being totally open and authentic with me. If you're like that with the Father, you will have discernment when it comes to situations like the one I just spoke about. Need I say more? I don't think so. Kina, what's up? She would say hi. Baby. Sounds like closure to me. Yes, ma'am. You have nothing to hide and nothing to disclose because I know everything about you already. You can have no other relationships like this one. Take time and savor its richness. Basking in my golden light. One of the worst consequences of the fall is the elaborate barriers people erect between themselves and others. This is how the Father works. Did I not say he would speak through these words? I didn't read these before, Yana's. I never do because I'm always overjoyed by moments like this. Confirmations like this. There were three other books. I always say seek three confirmations. We'll see how many we get. What are the worst consequences of the fall? is the elaborate barriers people erect between themselves and others. Facades abound in the world. Hmm. Even in my body, the church. Sometimes church is the last place where people feel free to be themselves. They cover up with Sunday clothes and Sunday smiles. They feel relief when they leave because of the strain of false fellowship. The best antidote to this artificial atmosphere is practicing my presence at church. Let your primary focus be communicating with me, worshiping me, glorifying me. Then you will be able to smile at others with my joy and love them with my love. Your only desire should be to the Father. Your only requirement is His fellowship with you. This was from 1 John chapter 1, chapter, uh, verse 5 through 7, Exodus chapter 33 through 14, and Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. 
from Carmichael, Whispers of His Power. Okay, which one is this one? Zeph? It says Z-E-F. Zeph. Zephaniah? Zephaniah. Okay. It's short for Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Three, chapter 317. Why can't I remember that book? It's a short book. We're going to read Zephaniah after it finishes. And video. it's Z. <laughs> one of the last ones. Chapter 317. You want to read that book afterwards? Okay. We're going to read this book afterwards. You want to see some homework. We'll speak about it tomorrow. Uh, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will be silent in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Mm. Sometimes, after a period of special prayer, there is silence. We are not conscious of any response on the part of God. We can give him joy by not misunderstanding his silence. Do you think that people of the faith get lost sometimes and go into to take that silence for like they're filled with worry or doubt about it so they start coming up with their elaborate barriers between them and others absolutely i'll call that a confirmation a second confirmation. personally i have gone through that would you like to share any stories on that there's a seat right here not right now or... i've i've left i left my faith more than once in my life my faith in christ my faith in creator do you really i have how many times twice since when when did you become a person of the way would you like to sit over here when did i become a person of what of the way i i i don't have any identification of that i love the i love the stats of by the way just love it there we go what's up For so for, forgave, wow. forgot that Lord loved me for a long time. Years? Was person was personally betrayed, felt betrayed by God because he didn't fulfill things that I thought I was supposed to have. So your outside desires destroyed your relationship? Yes, absolutely. My desire for motherhood betrayed me with the Lord, I think, because at times um, I was very, very angry because of miscarriages. How or, many did you have? In the teens. Holy shit. I'm um, so sorry. My last one was on my 43rd birthday last year. Um, so I thought, you know, he forgot me. I thought he for forgot me. I thought that I wasn't, hi Kina. I thought I wasn't worthy of um, his love because he didn't grace me with what I thought I deserved, which was motherhood. Which, you know, I've mothered everybody in my life. Absolutely everybody in my life. So I fulfilled that motherhood. He gave you more kids than you realized. <laughs> he gave me more kids. And in my profession, you know, in my profession, I, I've, I've helped a lot of people achieve a lot what of What is goals. your official title? Well, I, I, I'm, I was a program director for a, a home health care company. Basically running group homes um, that serve people with disabilities. So people who maybe don't have very high intellectual skills or um, maybe autism or there's, you know, I have a couple of houses that have a couple, three autistic folks or who have that diagnosis because yeah, that's You not have such a glint in your eyes, such oh, a yeah. great smile for them with the autistic. Um, so, or, you know, maybe some folks who have, you know, are really elderly or, you know, have Down syndrome or, you know, those kinds of things. So those, you know, people who don't have all of their faculties who need help living so and fulfilling their life. when did you realize that, that, that that was your motherhood? I mean, you said last year alone you, you, you 
had a miscarriage. So. I, you know, I've I've always been able to fulfill that need to mother with the clients that I've served. And I've had many clients. But how did you come back from that state of thinking the father had abandoned you? Or so, been angry at him? But you know, oh, yeah, you know, the anger, the anger was very palpable and very present. Um, when I met you a year ago in the desert. Valley know, of the Gods. Valley of the Gods. <laughs> Is it small G or little G? We'll never know. You will never know. <laughs> yeah. I, I was still in that state of why has he left me? Why is he not my father? Why is he not letting me be a mom? You know, um, so it took me a long time of, you know, um, self-discovery, um, throwing away all that pain. I went up to, after I, um, well, before I met you, actually, I had spent about 14 days in traveling in the, in the area and I had gone up to the Grand Canyon and I threw everything out. You threw it into the Grand Canyon, I or threw, just the energy? No, I threw everything out. I threw all of my, as as our friend would say, backpacks. I threw all my backpacks out. I threw them all into the to the uh, Grand Canyon, and for hours I sat and meditated, and then did a personal cleansing cleansing of like you know just let it all go, and then I went back down to Sedona, and um, spent some time in some vortexes and really reactivated myself, and then wow. So Mama Gaia helped you out. Mama Gaia has, has, has always been one of my leaders. The, so Mama Gaia took care of her daughter. Yeah, and really brought me back to Christ. And father, creator, mother, father, whatever anyone wants to call him. I call it creator because it's, it's you know, he's my father. He, he's my creator. He, he's what created the heavens and whatever's up there. And, you know, those beautiful sparkly things we see at night. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You know, sh mother really brought me back to 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 believing in. Okay, I wasn't forgotten. And you did this journey pr without. I mean, in my eyes, from everything I remember of happening last year, you did it primarily by yourself. It's really there was. You know, typically music is one of my saviors. And what is that drum that you play? It's called a tongue drum. So gorgeous. Oh, it is um, from Russia. It is a steel tongue drum, and it is absolutely gorgeous. And the frequencies that it can brings I go ahead? Me... I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. Don't let me forget. I want to put your YouTube channel that where it yeah. shows you playing these incredible instruments. Uh, it's <laughs> gorgeous. Oh, whatever. It's yes. beautiful. Yes. So remind me to put that you in can the description. That. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's a steel tongue drum, and it it the frequencies that it brings and the vibrations it brings to your body is absolutely amazing. But, um, so the sound, the sounds and the vibration absolutely reactivate you, me and brought, you know, brought me back to creator and, you know, spending a lot of time playing that and just reminding myself of the things that I went through in the desert and in the Valley of the Gods. Mm -hmm. There were some beautiful things and there were some traumatic things that happened just because of the earth. And that's because I'm an earth empath. Um, and, uh, you know, meeting you and Mr. Rick were, you know, two blessings of my life. And you, my sister, are just... <laughs> I can't even, like, there's no words or, or features in this earth that could express my gratitude for you. But anyways, so, you know, that's... That's when I was able to forgive Creator and 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 let go of the thought that he had forsaken me. You started seeking out inwardly. In other words, not seeking out, it was inward. I realized at the Grand Canyon and then in Sedona that um, nothing is external that I can find solace in. It's all right here. And, you know, that was one thing that resonated with me with our friend. He says this a lot, and I've heard him say it, and it was like, whoa! Um, church is in your heart. Church is right yeah, here. Derek? Yeah. Yeah. Church is here. 
And I've since a little itty bitty tiny little girl. I've always believed church is right here. I don't need it's to go heart. to no one. It's your heart. This song. is this is. That's why. The, that's why the. That's why uh, even the Christian, uh, the one of the things that did continue to um, exert out, is the fact the Christian faith is that, you know, he the Holy Spirit comes into your heart and rebuilds you from the inside out. So that that's just. I mean, how many more indications do you have to have that it's it, it's what the beats without your heart working, you have no life. There's so many scenarios you can say about it, but pretty much, what do you love? Yeah. What and loves I, you? I love my friends love who love you. me. I love you too. I'm going to let you get back to your thing. Oh, thank you. I love you. Let's see. Sometimes after a period of special prayer, we're speaking about silence. Let's see. We are not. Thank you for that. I know that's going to help a lot of people. I know it will. I love you. Good. Sometimes after a period of special prayer, there is a silence. We are not conscious of any response on the part of God. We can give joy. I always have to put my mask back in. That's my, that's my what's up to my teacher. <laughs> so, oh, wait. Make sure the mask is in the picture. Yeah. yeah. And my friend, they, they gave it to me too. Sometimes, she knows who she is. Sometimes mm. after a period of special prayer, there is silence. We are not conscious of any response on the part of God. We can give him joy by not misunderstanding his silence. He loves us to count on his tender caring, his deep solitude, even though for reasons that we may not know, he is for a while silent in his love. We grieve our Father when we allow discouraged thoughts to prevail. Does he, care, does he care so very much? He has not said anything to me. He has not answered. Love is a very tender thing. A thought can hurt it. But just because it is so tender, a very little thing can give it infinite joy. A little constant communications of love give real joy to our Father's heart. Moving on to 22 minutes. Here we're going to go with Mr. Oswald. I, uh, out was for his highest. I had a, I had a, I had a bit of a beef with Mr. Oswald. The last prayer thing that we did. I, I, he's always so dead on, but I was like, I'm going to have to agree to disagree with you, Mr. Mr. That's <laughs> part of Mr. Life. Chambers. <laughs> but, it's part of life. Disagreements. Yes, it is. But it's how we recover from those misunderstandings. Exactly. And we grow. The unheeded secret. What does unheeded mean to me? Somebody asked you for it? <laughs> Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. John 18.30 I was like, why can't I see? Oh yeah. <laughs> the great enemy of the Lord Jesus Christ today, or Joshua, Yeshua, Christ today is the idea of practical work that has no basis in the New Testament but comes from the systems of the world. Because in the world, the New Testament is all about the ultimately the two commandments, which is love Father as He loves you and love each other like He loves us. Right. The two most important ones that He wanted us all to heed. Exactly. It encompasses all the other ten. Indubitably. Indubitably, yes. <laughs> Let's see. The New Testament has come from the system. Okay. This work insists upon endless energy and activities, but no private life with God. Wow. I want to repeat that again. The great enemy of the Lord Jesus Christ today is the idea of practical work that has no basis in the New Testament, but comes from the systems of the world. This work insists upon endless energy and activities, but no private life with God. The emphasis is put on the wrong thing. Yeshua said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, with observation for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. That's Luke 17, verses 20 through 21. 
It is a hidden, obscure thing. An active Christian worker too often lives to be seen by others. While it is the innermost personal area that reveals the power of a person's life. Your attributes. That's what will show you what's in your heart. We must get rid of the plague of the spirit of this religious age in which we live. In our Lord's life, there, there was none of the pressure and the rushing of tremendous activity that we regard so highly today and, is a, dis, and a disciple is to be like his master. The central point of the kingdom of Jesus Christ is a personal relationship with him, not public usefulness to others. So... I'm a really busy person. Hmm. And so this always speaks to me. I always have to I say, well, am I running amok for the sake of my ego? Or am I running amok because I'm still learning how to slow down? Or am I running amok because I'm still codependent? I need to people, people please. I have to say, I'm in the middle. The ego is that part of me that says if i don't do if i don't if i'm not worthy every day then i may be kicked out i may not matter enough that's my old life that's my abusive family yeah. talking and i'm aware of it and i'm a year and a half out of it so am i aware of that and do i have to slow myself down and say no i will still be loved tomorrow mm -hmm. i will not be judged for what i did today it's like my mom's favorite one of my mom, mom my mother's my uh, original mother i guess mama bros is now my mama but <laughs> my original mother um mother of origin uh one of the, her famous last things that she said to me was like um what, <laughs> how was yesterday what have you done for me today yeah it's okay she always likes to be it's okay thank you baby girl um and it's like that I have to consciously be aware of and remind myself, I don't have to, I'm not being judged like that anymore. Right. Slow down. And when it comes to, when I see so much going on around me that is, requires help, I jump in and I, is that my codependent? No. Is that my ego anymore? Because there's two parts of ego and just to be clear about that, there's the ego that is a narcissistic whatever and then there's the codependent ego because when you go into victim mode and treat yourself like a batting range because you think that 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 is the that is the bipolar of the ego there's the cocky ego and then there's the victim ego both of those are unbalanced and they both come from the ego needing to be stroked stop it so I, I'm, I say that to myself. So fine, I'm still finding my balance. I'm still learning how to slow down. I'm still learning to be useful. So I just want to state that because that's what's in my heart right now. When I read verses like this, I always go, am, 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 I, am I doing wrong? So for whoever else is out there that feels the same way, you're not alone. And it is a journey. And I think that just by the fact that I'm going from that victim mode ego to slowing down and being more self-care wise, that's the part of the journey I'm in. If, that, if that's something you're working through, no, you're not alone. And keep working through, keep working to find that peace. And make sure that when you're working for other, working your butt off to help others, that it's coming from your heart and that you're doing it because you know they'll do that for you as well. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I'm learning to only work extravagantly for, or, or push myself in a balanced way only in certain times and only for certain people. And so I'm finding my way. We must get rid of the plague of the spirit of this religion age in which we live. In our, going back here a little bit. In our Lord's life, there was none of the pressure and the rushing of tremendous activity that we regard so highly today. And a disciple is to be like his master. 
the central point of the, you know, it's funny as I keep thinking of, <laughs> Jesus seemed really busy all the time. <laughs> I mean, wait a minute. Didn't he always have to say, leave me alone. I'm going to go to rest. He made that time to rest. You have to make time for yourself to rest is the point. And okay. rest in the Father in those moments. Right. And rest in the this knowledge. This is my of, moments of rest. <laughs> of being still. Yeah. And not even this is being still. Being right. still with absolutely everything. I'm getting better at sitting in bed and especially okay. in the morning and enjoying that. Yeah, because at 6 a.m. Okay. when I look out this window. The sun's here in Arizona. It's like red. It is. It is. It's so beautiful. And, it, and it's almost apocalyptic sometimes. It's yes. Red. And I and I sit there in gratitude and I remember the days that are coming. And then I'm like, I'm going to rest here right now because I can right here right now. And then, How long do you think you give yourself? Usually about 15 minutes. And then sometimes I'll go back to sleep. And that's when I, my alarm goes off at 6 a.m. And then sometimes I'm like... I'm like I fell asleep, but I'm I am I am learning to visualize it more. Let me, let me, let me give her, let me do. She's like I'm always in the video. I'm gonna be in the video even right now. That's Kina. We love her. She's trying to distract her with play. Okay, we'll finish up here, guys. We're hitting 31, and you know it starts get sketchy at 35. We must not get rid of the plague of the spirit of this religion. Okay, here we are. In our Lord's life. There was none of the pressure and the rushing of tremendous activity that we regard so highly today. And a disciple is to be like his master. The central point of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, is a personal relationship with him, not public usefulness to others. And I guess that's the other thing. If I wasn't, I guess I'm finding my balance because I am not losing my shit randomly because <laughs> what what happens when we burn out i was the queen of burning out oh i get mean i'd lose my shit i i short i, I, I get, get short, short with my with my patience that is usually forever yeah it's like nah no patience here baby yeah that's what happens when you don't find that balance so if you're seeing yourself be a quite a little spitfire, but not in a boundary sort of way, but more in a get off my back kind of way. And then more of like, I don't give an F sort of way. <laughs> Maybe take a little more time of meditation and see what the father has to say. Ask him questions or be silent and see what he says. He mm. says, what can, what do you have to tell me today? Don't always be the one telling him. <laughs> So, on True. that arena, please recognize you are the one that has to listen. It's better to listen <laughs> than to talk. Working on it since forever, and we'll be working on it till the day my breath leaves this body. I resemble that remark. It was up? <laughs> ADAD much? Well, you have no idea of where... Okay, it is not a practical activities. It is not the practical activities that are the strength of the Bible training college. Its entire strength lies in the fact that here you are immersed in the truths of God to soak in them before Him. See, a lot of people go to pastor school, and I've and I, we've all heard of pastors that are transparent. They will tell you. We've all seen the headlines on many occasion, and we've all seen the the fruits of many pastors, especially priests. So just because you're immersed in a situation or a place that is supposedly of the Father. Not to disagree with Mr. Osborne for the second reading in a row, but this was written a long time ago. Perhaps things have changed. Oh wait, no, they've just been revealed. No. no matter where you are, there you are. You could be in a different country and traveled a long way to get here. No matter where you are, there you are. It is entire strength lies in the fact that there, okay, you have no idea of where or how God is going to engineer your future circumstances and no knowledge of what stress and strain is going to be placed on you either at home or abroad. I can't remember who said it. I think it was Abraham, Abraham Hicks, one of the videos from Abraham Hicks that said it recently. Hey, why don't you try having 
a good time. And what does a good time mean? It means no stress because you're heading in the wrong direction. No, no anxiety because you're trying to push your, your ideas and understanding onto others or, or, or pushing a direction that the father doesn't want you to. What I mean, having a good time is like you're really in high energy and you're enjoying the time you're having there until you get to where you're going and you're going to enjoy that too. Try enjoying going where you're going and enjoying when you get there and have that be your life. Be in the moment. Be in the moment. And if you waste your time in overactivity instead of being immersed on the great fundamental truth of God's redemption, then you will snap when the stress and the strain to come. There we go. And the strain to come. Okay. Then you will snap when the stress and strain do come. But if this time of soaking before God is being spent in getting rooted and grounded in Him. That's how you keep having a good time, a good life, an abundant one. Keep being in gratitude and keep being in the moment. Look around. We all go through it, but we recover quickly. Quicker and quicker. <laughs> quicker and quicker. Some of us quicker than others. Working on it. Which may appear to be impractical, then you will remain true. Okay, so let me back. But if, but if this time of soaking before God is being spent in getting rooted and grounded in Him, which may appear to be impractical, then you will remain true to Him, whatever happens. Whatever happens. I'm gonna push this video because this is the this device. I use three different devices, so if you see me, the videos consistently change. That's why. And you know what? I'm not gonna risk it because <laughs> you were in this video, and I don't want to risk it. So we're gonna stop now. We love you guys. Have a very good night. You're afraid it's not gonna upload. I'm not risking it. I love oh. you guys. <laughs> Bye.